Today we're going to be taking a look at a very unique airbrush. This one is called the Iwata HPTH. I bought this model about six or seven years ago, and out of all the airbrushes that I have, this is the one that I use the least. So within this video, I'll be doing a full review of the Iwata HPTH while talking about the pros and the cons. And of course, I'll be talking about why I just haven't found this airbrush that useful. Like all Iwata airbrushes, the HPTH is built to a very high standard with excellent quality control. The airbrush has a nice chrome finish to it, and it feels really solid and sturdy in the hand. When it comes to build quality, I don't think any other brands come close to Iwata or Harder and Steenbeck. The HPTH has a 15 milliliter paint cup, which is about a half an ounce. This is a very generous size, which will hold a lot of paint, and also you could remove it and swap it out with a larger one if you need it. But I think for most applications, a 15 milliliter paint cup is more than enough. This airbrush has a very large nozzle at 0.5 millimeters. This makes it one of the best airbrushes out there for spraying thick paint. The nozzle here is removable, and you could switch this out between a fan cap and a standard round cap. I'll talk about this feature later when I break down the airbrush and I do a painting demo. On the front here, the airbrush is equipped with a MAC valve, which is an acronym for Micro Air Control. The purpose of this valve is to control the airflow to the nozzle. If I tighten this down, it causes less air to flow from the valve to the nozzle. So you could tighten this down to get some stippling effects, or you could just adjust it on the fly without having to go over to your compressor. This is definitely a cool addition added, but I don't think it's really necessary. The best way to adjust your air pressure is always at your compressor. On the back of the rear handle, this airbrush is equipped with a needle stop. By tightening this knob down, you limit the distance that you're able to pull the trigger back. So if you'd like, you could lock it at a certain point. That way, when you pull back on the trigger, you're going to get the same amount of paint every single time. Like most Iwata airbrushes, this one's very easy to break down and clean. The first thing that I want to do is remove the cup and the rear handle so that I have access to the needle. This needle is is very interesting. It's a 0.5 millimeter, but it doesn't come to a sharp point. The end of it is blunt and kind of rounded off. Unlike other airbrush designs, the tip of this needle doesn't protrude past the nozzle. As you can see here, it remains flush. This is very similar to what you'd see from an HVLP spray gun. The best way to remove the spring assembly is with an adjustable wrench like I'm doing here. Unfortunately, you're not able to adjust the trigger tension with this screw like you are with many other airbrushes. This spring guide assembly consists of two parts, the guide and the spring, and it feels very solid and well built. One thing that I appreciate about Iwata airbrushes is that they never seem to cheap out on even the smallest parts. Moving along to the head assembly, the first thing I want to do is remove Remove this large screw, and the purpose of this screw is to hold down the spray cap. As I mentioned earlier, the Iwata HPTH comes with two spray caps. This first one is a fan cap, and this is used for spraying very wide passes of paint. This makes the airbrush spray somewhat like an HVLP spray gun. And the second cap is a round one. This is going to give you that traditional airbrush spray pattern, just like every other airbrush that I reviewed on this channel. It's very easy to switch between these two caps, even while you're painting. It only takes a few seconds. This is pretty much as far as you'll ever need to disassemble this airbrush and clean it. I don't recommend removing the nozzle unless you absolutely have to. On this airbrush, we have one of those uh, traditional screw-in nozzles. You do receive a small wrench to remove this if you need to, but again, I don't recommend it unless you absolutely have to, like it's broken and you need to replace it. So the build quality on this one is nearly flawless. It's really what you come to expect when you buy any airbrush by Iwata. So this Iwata HPTH is kind of like a bridge between a traditional airbrush, like the Iwata Eclipse, to a larger spray gun like an HVLP or this LVLP. This Iwata Eclipse is perfect for general use airbrushing. It's equipped with a 0.35 millimeter nozzle and you could spray very thin lines down to about a quarter of a millimeter all the way up to larger spray patterns of about an inch to an inch and a half. This LVLP spray gun, which stands for low volume, low pressure, has a much larger nozzle at 1.3 millimeters. It's equipped with a fan cap, which sprays a very wide pattern, so it makes it great for laying down a lot of paint, and I'll mainly use this for varnishing a large painting at the end. The important thing about a spray gun like this is that I could adjust this knob on the top here. This allows me to regulate the air mixture that goes through the fan cap. If I tighten this down, less air is spraying from the two prongs out of the fan cap, giving me a smaller, tighter spray pattern. 
but if I loosen it up, more air is released from these vents. And this is what gives that traditional fan cap spray pattern, which is very wide. The Iwata HPTH doesn't have any way to adjust or regulate that air mixture. The MAC valve on the bottom regulates all the air coming through the nozzle, so it has no effect on the characteristics of the fan spray pattern. So unfortunately, this means you have a lot less control when you're trying to use the fan cap to spray in those wide passes. For me, the best way to use the HPTH is to only use the round cap. This way it sprays like a traditional airbrush with a much higher volume of paint. You can see that when I use this fan cap, I'm always going to get the same size pattern. I can't adjust it at all. And the major problem with this compared to a spray gun is that you just seem to get a lot more overspray. If you look at the top and bottom of each of these lines, there's a lot of speckled paint and splattered paint. To me personally, this just looks a little too sloppy. If I want that wide spray pattern, I'm much better off using a spray gun. When I switch to the round cap, I get a much tighter and more controlled spray pattern. It's nowhere near as wide as the fan cap, so you'll have to do an extra pass or two to get the same coverage. If you're looking for fine lines or details, this is not the airbrush. As you can see here, this is the thinnest line I'm able to paint. Checking with a ruler, the thinnest line I'm able to paint is roughly around a quarter of an inch. And with the fan cap, I can get a much larger spray pattern around two and a half to three inches. But this airbrush isn't really made for small detailed work. It's meant for spraying a pretty large volume of paint to get good coverage. It's incredibly useful if you're trying to spray some thicker paint through it. You don't have to dilute it. I've been sprayed some gesso through this in the past. I definitely don't recommend doing that, but it didn't have any problem doing it. I just had to spray at a higher PSI of around 35 to 40. So to me, I think this is an amazing airbrush that can do a lot. But if I want small detail, I'm always going to switch the Eclipse. And if I want to paint a wide spray pattern, I'm going to use a spray gun. So for that reason, I rarely use the HPTH, but that's nothing against it. That's really just my preference. And one of the most unique features about this airbrush is that it has a trigger very similar to what you see in a spray gun. It's on the bottom rather than on the top like a traditional airbrush. I do wish that there was a thicker handle on the back of this because it feels kind of clunky in the hand. It feels like it's, it's kind of tipping forward because there's nowhere for the palm of your hand to, to kind of rest on. I'm sure you could purchase one somewhere, but Unfortunately, it's not included with this kit. And this trigger design is, of course, a double action. When I pull back a small amount, I begin to get air. And then as I pull it back farther, the needle starts to retract and you start to get paint. You can control the amount of paint by how far back you pull the trigger, just like any other double action airbrush. So let's move along to some of the measurements. The first thing I'm doing is spraying with the round cap. This is with the needle fully retracted. I'm spraying distilled water at 20 PSI, and you can see here in Photoshop that I get a measurement of 17.4 degrees. Now switching over to the fan cap, spraying again at 20 PSI, you can see that we get a much wider spray angle. With this cap, I get a measurement of 59.9 degrees. Now if we take a look at this chart that I made of every airbrush that I reviewed on this channel, we can see that the HPTH has really great range. With the fan cap, we have a spray angle about three times wider than any traditional airbrush. And with that round cap, we have a very narrow spray angle, which is similar to the Neo, the Eclipse, and the Point Zero. These three other airbrushes have a needle size right around 0.3 millimeters, and the HPTH has a needle size of 0.5. Now, if you watched any of the reviews of those airbrushes, you were able to see that we were able to get very fine detail lines to around a quarter of a millimeter. And although the HPTH has a spray angle which is similar, the needle design is very different. So the thin lines with this are much wider than you can get with a traditional airbrush. On the left side of the screen, I have the Point Zero, which I reviewed last week, and that's a traditional airbrush. Just like every other airbrush I reviewed, the needle on this one protrudes past the nozzle cap. So as the paint atomizes past that tip, you get a very thin line right at the edge of that needle point. The HPTH on the right side of the screen is a different story because the needle is retracted within the nozzle. And since that needle is kind of dull and rounded off, you don't get that very sharp spray pattern at the very beginning of the spray. So basically this means if you're holding the airbrush a few inches away, you're going to feel comfortable and it's going to feel similar to a traditional airbrush. But if you get up close and try to get detail, you're just not going to be able to spray in those thin lines like you can with any other traditional airbrush. Now this airbrush works differently than the other ones I reviewed, but I'm checking the airspeed with the round cap and we can see that we get an airspeed of four meters per second at three and a half inches away, spraying at 20 PSI. 
This number is kind of pointless because this airbrush works so differently and it's meant to be sprayed at a higher PSI, but I'm including this number in in case anyone's interested. Checking the nozzle for some leaks, you can see that I'm using some soapy water here and applying it to the nozzle. And unfortunately it's leaking because you can see these bubbles coming out. This is never a good thing to see, but it's not a problem. All you have to do is take some beeswax, add it on those nozzle threads and seal it back up and it'll be fun. So let's move along to the last part, which is the painting demo. And this part, of course, is going to be subjective and I'm going to be talking about my opinions. This painting I'm working on here is going to be the next lesson for this channel, which is an advanced landscape. For the majority of this painting, I used an Iwata Micron Takumi because it just gives me a lot of control. But I switched over to the HPTH for a few parts here at the bottom to see how it performs. It's really great for spraying in a base coat like I did here with some yellow ochre. It's just nice to get some color down because it just lays it on so quickly. But then when I switch over to some detail parts like the shadows of the rocks here, I just feel like I don't have that much control. The consistency is excellent. The problem I have with it is that it just sprays a lot of paint because this airbrush, like I mentioned earlier, is not designed for detail. It's for laying down a large volume of paint. So, you know, it'd be great if you're doing something like a mural, but if you're doing a small, tight landscape, this is really not the airbrush to go with. But with that said, I was still able to get some detail with it. You just kind of have to go slow with it, understanding that when you pull back from paint, you're going to get a lot more than you would with a traditional airbrush or a detail airbrush like a Micron. Now I'm switching over to some opaque white right out of the bottle. And I'm using this to stipple over the water, which is going to give it that smoky effect. And it's also going to shift the hue toward a bluish uh, cooler tone. But as I'm spraying in a large area of this thick paint, this is really where this airbrush shines because it does such a great job at spraying that large volume of paint. I can hold it back pretty far. You don't even see the airbrush in most of these shots because I'm holding it about a foot and a half away from the canvas just dusting on a very thin layer of that opaque white. So although that I don't really need an airbrush like this for what I do, I think this airbrush can do some great things for people who may be painting larger works like mural artists. And of course, it's really good for spraying on thicker base coats if you're painting models. If you don't have a conventional spray gun like an LVLP or an HVLP, and you want to spray on these thicker paints in larger volumes, the HPTH is definitely a great airbrush to look at. It doesn't require as much air as a spray gun, so you don't need a large compressor. A normal one will work just fine. For me, it's never going to replace a conventional spray gun, but it's still such a cool airbrush, and I'm glad I own it. So that's going to do it for this review. I hope this was helpful for anyone who's looking to pick up the Iwata HPTH or one of the similar ones that's on the market today. As always, thank you so much for watching, and next week we're going to go back to some painting lessons, so I really hope to see you then. I hope everyone has a great week, and I'll see you back here next Friday.